and welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. I'm your host, Dori Nugent. I'm super excited to be with you all today, as well as our special guest. But before we get started, I want to take one moment to give a warm thank you to our sponsor, MyZone. Now, without further ado, let's get started. I'd like to introduce you our special guest, Jim Worthington. Jim is the proud owner of the Newtown Athletic Club, also known as the NAC. It's located in beautiful Bucks County in Pennsylvania. You also might recognize Jim's name or even his face as he was chairman of the board of URSA. Let's welcome Jim Worthington. Hi, Jim. Hey, Dory. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I want to talk to you a little bit about leadership within the fitness industry. You're obviously a veteran leader within the industry. If I asked you to give me two or three sentences to finish this statement, how would you finish it? And that is, what is a good leader? Dory, I think a good leader is someone who gets out and leads from the front. Someone who takes charge, gets his hands dirty and him or her's hands dirty and gets out there and does what it takes to do to move things along. With leadership, you know, it's always evolving. It's always changing. There's different styles of leadership. Depending on who's in front of you, you have to lead different ways. With the pandemic that's going on, I'm pretty sure I could say that the leadership is definitely different now with your staff and within your four walls than it was maybe six months ago. How have you seen your leadership style change since gyms have been closed and you have to motivate your staff? You know, even for those out there that have furloughed staff, they're going to have to bring them back and try to remotivate them. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Honestly, when we're open, my leadership style is completely different because I'm in contact with people day to day, hour to hour. I can call them into my office, but now we're all working remotely. I have to depend on them to and really empower them to get things done and to work on their own and, and really be themselves show leadership. Again, I don't really supervise anyone. I have super general managers that do that. But because the general managers aren't in contact with these people, we have told them that they each have to have ownership of their department and get things done and reboot what they're doing and you know take this as an opportunity to make changes and make their areas of responsibility better. So in my case, I'm kind of sitting here alone in the NAC talking to a handful of people that are really are empowered to make sure they're getting the most out of people. Honestly, I'm just kind of doing my own thing and trying to do more things outside the industry to lead from here. What advice would you give to leaders to get them outside of their comfort zone and get them outside of the four walls and be a leader within a community or an organization such as URSA? I think when you get as fortunate as I've been over the years in Linda, 42 years where we built a club up from three acres, 15,000 square feet to 26 acres and 250,000 square feet with 12,000 members, arguably one of the biggest clubs in the country, there's a responsibility to do more than just you know, business. And, and that responsibility entails trying to do things that outreach and help people. 20 years ago, we came up with our own foundation called Have a Heart. We raised money through that for ALS, like you mentioned, and a number of different charities. We've gotten involved with things like the Right to Try Bill, which allows people with terminal illness the right to try experimental drugs that the president speaks about all the time. That was a bill, in fact, right behind me in the in the wall is the actual signed bill from President Trump, the original copy of the Right to Try bill. Recently, in the last three or four years, because URSA has been so good to me and I was the, the ex-chair and the organizations really allowed me to grow to who we are today. Without them, we wouldn't be here. I felt a, a real obligation to give back to them as much as I could over the years, but even more so now with trying to get legislation passed in D.C. on the FIT bill and more recently a, a bill that was just dropped yesterday in, in Congress, when I mean dropped, introduced, which is business interruption insurance that we're trying to get covered for all businesses, not just health clubs. I mean, I think when life's been good to you, you need to turn around and give back. And I hate to say this because I don't want anybody to think this is why I do it, but honestly, outreach to your community and doing good things actually comes back to you in many ways, business-wise, in terms of enhancing your business, making it more reputable, having people want to be part of your organization. I mean, we're a community here. We're a lifestyle center. So for us, when we 
do things that, you know, the, any number of things that we do on a weekly basis. It's all part of what you do to give back. And, you know, by, by the way, you, when you die, you know, you don't drag a trailer full of money with you to the grave. What you leave behind is the legacy and what you did. And that's what Linda and I are most proud of is the work we do outside of the, the business aspect of the club. Absolutely. And that, you know, that shows through. And it's important for leaders to know that pushing yourself outside of the club is only going to help the club boost its, you know, just its presence within not only the industry, but the community. Just to shift a little bit, talking about leading the way, I read in the Club Solutions magazine that yourself, the NAC, the staff, you have donated the Newtown Sports Training Facility for emergency services. Tell us a little bit, maybe how you decided upon that or how other clubs could maybe take it a step further and donate their facility or some empty space that they might have for Well, I would like to say it was some kind of ingenious, unbelievable thing, but I think it was just a common sense move. On March 15th, that Sunday, Governor Wolf shut us down. And the next day, that on the Monday the 16th, I was in the gym with my workout partner, Dan McCluskey, and we're we're hitting weights and it's about 8.30 in the morning. I was looking out uh, the field house and it's like a couple hundred yards away. I uh, said to Dan, you know what? We should be able to utilize that for something here. I said, I gotta, I'm going to make a phone call. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, well, just wait a minute. So I called the county commissioner, uh, Diane Bersegli, and I said, Diane, what do you think of using a field house for either a blood drive or storage of things, whatever the case may be. I didn't think of a hospital, I'll be honest. I did know that because of the crisis, there would probably be a need for something. She said, hey, that's a great idea. We'll put you on the list. Then shortly thereafter, I called my congressman. And again, this is a follow-up of your question earlier. Immediately called my congressman during the same workout and said, you know, Brian, you know, do me a favor, get me on a federal list in case you know there's facilities need. I have a 40,000 square foot empty building. Got on that list. Three and a half, four weeks later, I get a call from the county commissioner and says, hey, Jim, we may have the need overflow for a hospital because the hospital may get inundated. Were you willing to donate your field house? Like you said, you was. I said, absolutely, let's do it. So the next thing they know, they came out on a Monday. They checked the facilities out. They came in and started moving things in. And by Saturday, it was set up. That's awesome. Fantastic, Jim. And again, just a vision of a leader through and through, inside and out. In our brief discussion, I could talk about leadership all day long. It's probably my favorite topic of, of all topics. Just give me, I need one, uh, keep me, fit, inspiration, a takeaway for our viewers today and our listeners about leadership in the fitness industry. I don't know if this is directly... Uh, absolutely like about leadership, but I do live by a motto, which is successful people do what unsuccessful people could do, but choose not to do. Well, absolutely true. One thing when I, I hear your name, I think of passion. So I think you have a lot of passion. I think you show a lot of passion and you embrace passion. And before we wrap up today, I did a little digging about some things that I think you're very passionate about that I kind of see as an outsider looking in. So I have five symbols here, the individual on a piece of paper. I want you to only give me one or two words, try to keep it very short, one or two <laughs> words, but on, play on your passion and what emotion comes to play. All right, first one, Ursa. Love, love, I love, love Ursa. One of my favorite, well, I have two favorites here. This is one. <laughs> my roots, that's my roots. Happer Horsham, that's my roots. I mean, uh, you, they, nobody knows you better than the people you grew up with. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, Happer Horsham is uh, Jim's alma mater for high school. Yeah. Okay, uh, next one. I know this is dear to your heart. Uh, I mean, you know, my life's work, exercise is medicine, President's Council. I mean, it was a defining moment in my career. I mean, I could literally cry when you held that one up. Fourth one? Knack. Well, I mean, my again, life's work, 42 years in evolution, my platform. Good one. These are great. And the last one is one that I think you and I, we share a lot of passion for. The USA, American flag, patriot. You said it better than me. That's exactly what I would say. 
Love my country. Jim, thank you so much for your time today. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you about leadership. Hopefully someday we can get back together and spend a lot more time on this subject. But I appreciate everything and continue to be a leading force out there in the fitness industry because we need those leaders. Thanks, Dory. It was awesome. Appreciate thank you so much.